Hi everyone, welcome to the PX4 quadcopter tutorial. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, take the PX4 autopilot system and a quadcopter such as this here and we'll go step by step through everything that needs to be done from assembling your autopilot, uploading your firmware, uh, mounting it on your quadcopter, calibrating everything and bringing it to the point of having your your very first uh, hovering flight. So let's begin by taking a look at the components that you're going to need and how to assemble the board to start with. Okay, to begin with, uh, obviously going to need the PX4 autopilot. Now what we're going to be looking at is the PX4 FMU, this board here combined with the PX4 IO. Uh, so this tutorial is going to take a look at uh, these two boards in combination. Uh, we can look at the standalone FMU in a separate tutorial. So you're going to need these. Um, what also comes with the kit is usually the server headers are not mounted and nor is the uh, power connector here. So you'll receive it separately like this. The first thing you're going to do is to, to solder it onto the board. Um, same goes for the power connector here. You can uh, solve that on as well. Forget about this lead. Uh, that's something else I've been experimenting with. Um, the FMU is ready to go. Comes with an SD card, which we won't need in the very first step here. Um, there's nothing extra that you need to do with this before we make use of it. Now, there are some other things that uh, come along with the kit and some extras that you may be interested in. One that you're going to require, uh, now if you get the package, the IIO and the FMU together, you're going to get the safety switch. You're going to need this in order to um, boot the IO board into bootloader mode so you can load firmware up onto it. This is also used to arm your quadcopter um, prior to flight. Without this, you're not going to get far. So, Something that is uh, optional but highly recommended is a buzzer. Now, this is going to be used to give you various kinds of uh, signals, warning tones. Um, it's useful during calibration, for example. Uh, so, highly recommend that. I get that if you can. Then, at some point down the track, you may want to also fly waypoints, a fully autonomous flight, and then for that, you can use a uh, GPS module and the cable that it comes with. You don't need that for this uh, setup that we're going to look at today, but um, certainly something, you know, for further down the track when you want to try something more interesting than just flying manually. And then, of course, we have the radio. This will allow you to communicate with the ground control station uh, wirelessly. Uh, now, you don't have to have this. You can also uh, just use a USB cable to program, configure your uh, flight controllers and uh, once you have things tuned then you can um, basically go ahead and fly without this. But this is going to make it a lot easier to tune your parameters um, when you're trying to get your quadcopter up and flying. So highly recommended. You can get a set. You need to get one for the quadcopter plus one for the uh, ground control station, so the laptop that you're using. And then, of course, you're going to need some way of being able to read your micro SD card. Either you have a, an adapter, which possibly came with it, like this. Alternatively, you can have a USB-based one, like that. Uh, what we also have here then are the standoffs that come with the board. This is basically to go in between the two. We'll see that later on. Uh, then you're going to need, and uh, this comes with the kit, with the IO board. This is the power connector. Basically plugs in here, like this. So that comes in there. You're going to be soldering the other end. To whatever type of connector you're using, which connects to your battery, to your LiPo. 
And then finally, what we need is our radio system. Move this aside. Now in my case, I have a Graupner. There are various types that work. Um, check on the wiki which systems are supported. So we've got the transmitter. And then of course we have the receiver, along with a cable to connect uh, the receiver up to the I.O. board um, via PPM in this case. If you're using a Spectrum, then there are other ways of connecting it. I'm not going to be showing you that. You can look up on the wiki how that works. Let's take a closer look at these two boards. Uh, let's start off with the PX4 FMU. Now let's take a look at some of the main uh, components, uh, parts of interest. Uh, first of all, we have a micro SD slot here. Uh, this is where your micro SD card will slide in. This is a version 1.6 board. Basically, the SD card can slide in and out. Worst case, it will just pop out in case of a crash. Um, on the 1.7 board, this will actually lock into place. Uh, now, if we have a look at the end here, <clears throat> we have three different connectors. This one here is for your buzzer. And then over here we have a serial port, which is typically used for your GPS. And then we have the multi-connector here. There are various pinouts uh, available here um, that you can use to control your motors if you're using this in standalone mode, various serial ports, uh, power, ground, and so on. And then around here, on this side we have the USB port, which we're going to be using quite a bit to power the board, upload firmware, uh, even get a connection to the uh, console. And here we have a reset button, a small black reset button. And then on the underneath side, we have our expansion connector, which is used to connect it to the I.O. board. Let's bring the I.O. board over here. You can see the matching set of pins, basically, they will go in like this. So let's take a look at the I.O. board. So, as I said, the expansion connector is here. Um, let's flip it over. Now, when you receive this board, these servo headers are not going to be connected, uh, attached to the board, and nor is the power connector. So you'll receive them separately like this. There's the power connector. You're going to need to put them into place here and solder them on. A little tip for connect, uh, soldering up the servo header here is to put it into position, hold it in place, solder a single pin one pin only. Make sure that you have it aligned properly like this. If you look at it on the side, you can see it's more or less aligned. When you're happy with that, you can then go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. Uh, and then you're done with that bit. Don't worry about this little black wire here. This is not of importance at the moment. And this board then has a number of other connections on it, uh, many of which you won't make, of, uh, make, won't make any use of, um, but probably the most likely ones are going to be at the end of the board here. These are two serial ports which you're going to use uh, for things like radio and so on. Okay, there we have it. Okay, now we're going to look at connecting the two boards. Um, so as I explained before, they're going to connect like this. Make sure the uh, pins go right in there and don't overlap. So you can just push it in gently. You don't have to push it the whole way yet, because what we're going to do then is put these separators which come with your boards in the middle here. and put a plastic screw down through a uh, plastic bolt through the middle here. Okay, so I've connected the two boards now uh, with the standoffs in place. You can see here, I've only put two in. 
course, if you put in your quad, you should have all four in place. Just have on a little plastic holder I made here. Um, now, what we want to do before we move on to flashing the firmware is we want to install the safety switch. We're going to need this in order to get the I.O. board into bootload mode. So, what we need to do first is find the port that this switch is going to be inserted into. You see the servo headers are here, there's the power connector, and right above that is a, a port with three pins. Now the connector will go into that. Make sure you get the alignment right. It only goes in one way. Don't push too hard, uh, and then you'll know if you've got it right or not. So push that in there, you should feel a little, gentle little snap as it goes into place and that locks in place nicely there. Okay, so with that we have our safety switch again. This way we can go ahead and flash firmware onto the I.O. board. We also need this later on for arming the autopilot. Okay, so we're about ready to uh, upload firmware onto these two boards. Uh, what I'm going to do first is basically apply power to these boards via the USB port so you can see what the LEDs that are on both boards uh, look like. Um, so what we're going to do is take the, the USB cable that was uh, provided with the um, autopilot. I'm going to plug one end in here. Okay. And then the other end is going to go into the laptop. 